being a slicer, the head and the spine get in front of the golf ball. The left side or the trail side of the body gets extended and I now come outside in and that slice is still going to be there no matter how hard you try and get rid of it. Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over how to fix a slice with a driver. I'm going to discuss some key concepts we need to understand to get rid of that banana slice and I'm going to give you a few drills that will have you hitting it straighter than ever. But before we get to that, I've really enjoyed bringing this free content to you and our YouTube community, it's growing and that's exciting and I want it to continue to grow and you can help me with that. And the way you can help me is share this channel with your golfing friends, like this video when it's over, subscribe to my YouTube channel and the easiest way to do that, click on that little red square in the corner of this video and that just tells you when I have new videos available for you to watch and then comment. Okay, so let's get rid of that dreaded slice once and for all. And little teaser here, I've got a secret move later in the video that not a lot of people talk about, a lot of teachers talk about, but has a huge impact on why you slice the golf ball, so stay tuned for that. But before we get into all that, I want to review ball flight. For those of you that are new to my YouTube community, I've talked about this in other videos, so let's go over ball flight. So the most important variable for the starting direction of the golf ball is the club face. If this face is square at impact, the initial projection of the ball is going to be straight. My curve, once it gets out there, we'll talk about that in just a second. If the face is pointed left, the initial projection is going to be left, and again, it can curve once it gets out there. And if it's pointed to the right, the initial projection is going to be right, and again, it can curve. So now, let's talk about the curve on a golf ball and how that happens. So yes, I have a ping pong paddle here and a, and a golf ball. We can pretend it's a ping pong ball, but it applies to golf as well. So this would be the golf club head and this would be the golf ball. And I'm going to do this left-handed, so if you're right-handed, just flip it around. But if I go this way across the ping pong ball or the golf ball with a club head, what happens is the ball spins this way. And if I go the opposite direction across the ping pong ball or the golf ball, I see the opposite spin. So now we start to understand why we slice the golf ball and path has a huge effect on that. If I go this way as a left-handed golfer across the golf ball, I'm going to see that slice spin. So that's the first thing we're going to talk about, but there's really two very important, there's a lot of variables that go into slicing a golf ball, but two very important ball flight variables and that's face and path. So we're going to go over some path things to get the path going uh, the right way and then we'll talk about fixing that face so they're congruent and that the ball doesn't slice anymore. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about our setup and if I know that hey I'm slicing the ball because I'm going this way which for a left-handed golfer that's over the top it would be the other way around for a right-handed golfer I've got to work on getting the club head to travel more out to the left and so the first thing that I do with my students is I give them a little setup change because again I, I, I like to move least invasive to most invasive so if we just make a little setup adjustment all of a sudden that slice is gone awesome right real easy and I do have TrackMan hooked up here so as we hit golf balls I'm going to throw some data up there so you can see uh, the variables change as I'm changing them all right so the setup change, so we know, hey, I sliced the ball, got to be coming over the top, or you put your, yourself on video and you see that you're definitely coming over the top, or you use a TrackMan or some other radar device and you know you're swinging outside in, what's the first step I can do to fixing this? And we're going to talk about setup and particularly closing our shoulders uh, or getting my shoulders for a left-handed golfer to point a little bit more to the right. Now a couple things happen as I do this. As I close my shoulders or get them pointed to the right more, because my shoulder is hooked to my hip or my pelvis, 
I'm gonna feel that come in just a little bit too. And I bring that up because I, as I make these adjustments, I have students bring that up to me. They say, hey, I feel my, my hip or my pelvis coming in a little bit too. Is that okay? And of course it is. We just wanna get everything pointed a little bit more left of target because in reality, the club will follow my body line. So if I get set up a little bit more to the right as I'm swinging, you can see, uh, excuse me, as I get set up a little more to the left, you can see I'm gonna swing the club a little bit more to the left. So from face on, just to show you here, we're gonna work on closing those shoulders. Notice as I close my shoulders, I tilt, which is a good thing with the driver. Remember the driver's in, the, uh, the ball's in the air when I hit a driver, it's high on a tee. So tilting is, is perfectly fine and actually we want that because it helps us to hit up on it. And just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna really close myself because I wanna show you a change in my path on the track man. So I'm gonna work on really pointing my shoulders left and then we're gonna hit one and we're gonna get a little bit of feedback from TrackMan. So my target would be that white flag right down the middle of the fairway. And so what I'm gonna do as I set up here is I'm gonna close my shoulders or point them to the left, almost at this red flag over here, or even left of that. So I'm gonna really drastically kind of tilt and close those shoulders. Now notice it makes it easier for me to get the club inside. And guess what? If I get the club inside and behind me, it's much easier for me to swing out to the left or to left field, whatever you want to call it. All right, so I'm super, super closed here. And again, I'm just doing this more for effect. I wouldn't necessarily do this on the golf course. And then we're going to hit one. So I was set up so closed and so tilted that I actually drop kicked that ball. I actually hit behind it. But you're going to see the track man numbers were good there uh, and that ball definitely was drawing you could probably even argue it was a bit of a hook so definitely got rid of that slice by doing that okay so as i mentioned i've got a secret move that's going to help you get rid of that slice that people don't realize it doesn't get talked about a lot but we're going to talk about it right now and it has to do a little bit with the setup but it's a, a deeper understanding of what that setup we just used helps us to do and then in the next segment I'm going to give you the best drill that will definitely get rid of your slice. Best drill you've ever seen for a slice and it will be gone if you do that drill. So that's coming up shortly. All right so one thing that we see with people who slice the golf ball is as they come into impact the trail side of their body so I'm doing this left hand it's going to be the left side of my body if you're right-handed it's just going to be the right side of your body but as they come into impact the right side of their body is extended or stretched and their spine and their head get in front of the golf ball and those people that play more of a draw or a hook pattern as they come into impact what you see is you see more tilt so you can see uh, the left side of my body is is tilted my head and my spine are more behind the golf ball. So as I said, that kind of plays into the setup that we did uh, in the first segment. But you know, you, you do that and you're like, okay, I set up, I close my shoulders, but I'm still slicing. I'm not, I'm not hitting the ball as, as solid as I want to. And I, I still see it spinning off uh, with that banana slice. And I, I don't want to see that anymore. What else can I do? Or what else do I need to understand that goes along with this? And what we need to understand is once we get set up in that good shoulders closed position and a little bit of tilt is I want to maintain or even increase that as I get into impact. And you can see if I do that, if I increase that tilt into impact, where is the club head traveling? It's traveling out to the left more, which for me is inside out, which we know from the path discussion that that's gonna get rid of my slice. Now, I wanna show you what happens or what the other pattern looks like when I'm over the top or I slice the golf ball. So I get to the top of my backswing and again I could start in a really good position. Hey Mark, you know, I, I close my shoulders like you, you asked me to. And I got to the top of my backswing, but on the downswing, I'm getting my head and my spine in front of the golf ball. I'm extending the trail side of my body 
And as you can see, where's that club head coming from? It's coming from outside and, and I'm done from there. That ball's gonna slice. Uh, or if I, I flip the face over, I might hit a, a scream and pull, but I'm gonna hit something that I don't like. So let's look at that from face on one more time. So, you know, great setup. I, I did what you asked me to do in the first segment, but once you got to the top, being a slicer, the head and the spine get in front of the golf ball, the left side or the trail side of the body gets extended and I now come outside in and that slice is still going to be there no matter how hard you try and get rid of it. So we're going to hit another golf ball and still got the track man hooked up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to close my shoulders like we talked about before, but I'm just going to work on maintaining that that tilt through impact or if anything increasing it getting my head and my spine just a little bit more behind and uh, we'll see what we get with that and then next we're going to talk about that super drill I came up with years ago and it got some traction and it's helped a lot of people to stop slicing okay so I'm closing the shoulders I'm going to rehearse I'm going to keep a little more tilt I'm going to keep the head and spine behind and let's see what we get here. Yeah, that was great. That was a very straight ball flight. I do have some wind coming out of the north this morning. That's why I've got this sweater on. A little chilly here for Naples weather. Um, but the result, definitely an inside out path. And uh, the ball started drawing and then straightened out. But guess what? No slice. Okay, so looking at that TrackMan data, my swing wasn't out to the left as far as I would like to see it, but guess what? The ball didn't slice. So again, first fix is probably a better fix for me than the second one, but that's why I'm giving options here because I'm not sure which one is going to help you at home, but through default, you're going to find the one that gets rid of that slice. All right, so as promised, I'm going to go over a drill that I came up with uh, actually the year I got my track man so this was back in probably 2012 and the first time I used it I used it with a lady who was swinging 12 degrees outside in for those of you who know track man numbers just trust me double digits outside in or over the top is not good that's a slice all day long um, and I took her with this one drill from swinging 12 degrees outside in to swinging 12 degrees inside out and turning her slice uh, into a draw and now I've done it with countless uh, people since and so I want to go over that drill and remember at the beginning of the video I said there's two variables that we got to fix to stop slicing the golf ball one is the path and one is the face so we haven't really talked about the face yet but guess what we're about to all right so this is what we're going to do is we are going to set a golf ball up first of all and you're going to address that golf ball and then you're going to turn and face behind yourself and set that club head on the ground. So my feet stay parallel to the target line. I am just turning my chest to face the camera if somebody was standing behind me and I'm just putting the club right on the ground. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some swings back and forth. And what this is going to help me do is it's going to help me feel the club get further behind me than I've ever felt. And people who slice the golf ball Guess what they do? Watch as I'm swinging this club back and forth. Notice how my chest and shoulders stay facing the camera. When I first do this drill with slicers, this is what I see. That lead shoulder opens up. And guess what? If I'm swinging at that golf ball and the lead shoulder opens up, what's the club going to do? It's going to come over the top. It's going to come across the golf ball the way that we don't want to, and it's going to result in a slice. So a, key, a couple key things that we need to remember when we do this, this drill is I want to keep my shoulders squared if somebody was standing behind me or I have it squared to the camera, you guys are behind me, and I'm just swinging it back and forth. Now, here comes the face component. Notice as I'm doing that, I am rolling my hands over. So I've got very light grip pressure, and I'm just letting my left hand roll over my right, my left forearm roll over my right forearm and that's the squaring component because see I could get you swinging out to the left or I could get myself swinging out to the left but if I point the face left what's going to happen 
Remember, face is the most important variable for the starting direction of the golf ball. So if I swing left and point the face left, guess what? It's going to be a block. That ball's going left over these trees over here. So we can't just fix the path. We also have to have a face that complements it. So as I'm swinging inside out, I've got to work on squaring that club face. And the thing is, I can swing as far left as I want to. And this is a hard concept for people to get. And I, I have this conversation daily on, on my lesson tee. I can swing as far to the left as I want. I could swing directly at that tree over there. As long as the club face, when I touch the golf ball, is pointed that way, the ball's going to at least start that way. It might spin like crazy if I'm swinging out that much. But at least it's going to start out here in front of me. So as we're doing this drill and that releasing of the club or the left hand over the right hand, it's really important. So I have a couple names for this drill. I call it the excessive into out drill. My friends, when I shot a video about this eons ago, uh, called it the Durlin drill. I don't necessarily call it that. But all I'm doing is swinging, if you look at it, perpendicular to the target line or I'm keeping my back to the target. And I'll just show you from face on so you can see it and then I'm going to hit one. So I just turn like somebody's standing right behind me. I put the club on the ground and I'm just going to swing it back and forth. My back stays to the target. I'm swinging across or perpendic perpendicular to the target line and I'm using my arms and hands to and wrists to go ahead and release the club. All right, so I've done this quite a bit now. I've got a good feel for it. So I'm going to get my good setup going here and see if I can make a swing that feels the same uh, but allows me to hit the golf ball. Obviously, I don't want to go that way and miss the golf ball, but something that feels similar but allows me to hit the golf ball. Yeah, and that was a great ball flight. Again, it took off like it was going to draw, but we have a heavy wind out of the north, so didn't quite do that. But again, the key was there was no slice on that golf ball. So now you understand how to fix a slice with a driver. I've gone over some key concepts that we need to know if we're going to get rid of that banana slice, as well as three efficient drills, that one of which will help you to never slice the golf ball again. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have two more playing right now that I promise will help you to continue to improve your game. And remember, please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and comment.